Howdy, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Makeup and Music. So this um, will be my third video featuring a music legend. I've talked about Dolly Parton and George Strait in my um, previous videos. Um, so I hope y'all are having just the best day and thank you for spending the day with me um, or this time with me as I get ready. So today um, I thought I would talk about Merle Haggard. Um, he was actually one of my grandma's, my grandmother's, um, m one of her favorite uh, um, singers of all time. And I remember spending time with her. She lived out on a farm. And so during the summer, I would go spend a week or two um, time with her. And she you know, had a, a garden and chicken coop and we'd go out to the um, the garden and we'd pick, you know, vegetables. We'd pick the vegetables and we'd pick, we'd go to the chicken coop and get the fresh eggs and she would um, uh, cook in the kitchen like, oh man, the best home cooked meals, you know. And she would be listening to Merle Haggard on her um, cassette player. Um, anyways, I just remember those are like my best, like fond memories of her. And so I just, whenever I hear Merle Haggard on the radio, I just, I just think of her a lot, um, when I hear him. So those are just good memories of, of my grandma. So anyways, I thought it would be nice to talk about Merle Haggard today. So you know that when I do my, um, research when I pick somebody to talk about and I do my research I always make notes because I don't want to um give inaccurate information for one I want to make sure that I'm giving the right information and that um so I, I write notes down so I will glance up at my notes a lot just so you know that's what I'm doing and I'm also wearing my brown wig today because you know my hair is short, really short and blonde. But I thought I'd change it up a bit today and go with some long brown hair. So I'm having to work around this long brown wig today. Anyways, so let's talk about Merle Haggard. So Ronald Merle Haggard, who's also known as the Hag, um, he was born April 6th. 1937 in um, Oildale, California, um, and he died. He also he died April 6th, and uh, April 6th, 2016, on his 79th birthday. Um, from devil pneumonia he died at his ranch there at home and he was living in palo cedro i think is how you say it palo cedro california so on his 79th birthday so april 6 1937 and died in 2016 on his 79th birthday. So, anyways, um, 79 years old. Um, he was a an American country uh, singer, songwriter, guitarist, and a fiddler. Merle was born during the Great Depression, and his childhood was somewhat troubled. Actually, it was quite colorful to say the least, and somewhat troubled, I guess, is kind of, I think, more of a, <laughs> an understatement, um, is quite troubled, and, um, yeah, his father, I, I think when his father passed away is probably when his troubles really started, um, he was incarcerated many times, and he finally, 
you know, ended up in prison, um, which we're going to, I'll get into all that here in a minute, but he um, went to prison when he was released from prison in 1960. He managed to turn his life around and he launched, he obviously launched a very successful country music career. So he gained much popularity, obviously, um, singing songs about um, the working class that occasionally, I'm gonna read this part. This is a quote from the internet Wikipedia on Merle Haggard. It says, he gained popularity with songs about the working class that occasionally contained themes contrary to the prevailing anti-Vietnam War sentiment of the much popular music of that time. So, anyways, between the 1960s and the 1980s, he had 38 number one hits um, on the country music charts. Several of them also made the Billboard All Genre Singles Charts. Singles Chart. So, he um, continued to release... Um, albums into the uh, 2000s, but his success was really strong there in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, I would say. Um, you know, by the 90s and 2000s, he was getting quite a bit older. But, and, but he was still putting out records into the 2000s. Um, yeah. Anyways, so he even received honors, some honors, um, for his success in his music career. So he got a, um, in 1977, he was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of, Hall of Fame. And then in 1997, the, um, Country Music Hall of Fame, he received a BMI, Icon Award in 2006, and um, in that same year, he received a, a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and then in 2010, he received a um, Kennedy Center Honor. So, okay, so let me back up here a little bit and tell you about his personal life. So, his family, his mom and dad, and he has two other siblings, a brother and a sister, um, they were originally uh, living in Shakota, Oklahoma, and um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I guess I'm assuming they lived maybe on a farm, but this was during the Great Depression, and it the the article um, said that their barn. So Merle Hager, Merle wasn't born yet but their barn caught fire. So they, um, I guess they decided there wasn't, I, I don't know if it like, I don't know if, I don't know the whole story. It didn't go into detail, but they, that's when they moved to, um, and this was in 1934. So that they, they moved to um, California and this is still during the Great Depression. So they moved to California and they settled in California, um, living, and they lived in this, like, little apartment. And, um, they found, like, this boxcar, and Merle's dad started, like, fixing this boxcar up, and they actually started living in this boxcar, I guess maybe, well, the story, the article said that he fixed this box car up and made it livable, but I guess maybe he made it better than the apartment that they, that they were living in because he was able to make it bigger. He like added rooms onto this box car. So it, it had a kitchen and a bathroom and rooms onto it. So it ended up being bigger and better than the little apartment that they were 
originally living in. So they settled into Cal settled in California into this boxcar that he basically made into a home. And so this was in 1934. And so then along came Merle in 1937. So they're set. They settled in California in 19. And here comes Merle in 1937. And then the dad passed away in 1945. And that deeply affected Merle. In fact, he, um, I mean, it really, I guess, really affected him because um, that's pretty much when all of his troubles, I guess, started. Um, his mom had to, you know, start working. She had to, she found a job as a bookkeeper. And so when she's working, um, she's away from the home and there's never really any more mention of the other two siblings at, after that point. Um, but anyways, the mom, she's having to work. So she's away from the home and I guess she can't really keep a good eye on on Merle. So Merle starts, you know, getting into lots of trouble. Um, but however, it did mention that the older, the brother gave, um, Merle his guitar. And so Merle taught himself how to play the guitar and he was influenced by the music of Bob Wills, Lefty Frizzell, and Hank Williams Sr. Anyways, um, the mother's gone away from the home a lot, so um, Merle becomes progressively rebellious. So she sends Merle away to this weekend juvenile detention center um, so that he can change his attitude. Well, that doesn't work. In fact, his attitude just becomes worse. And um, he commits you know, a number of minor offenses. Um, thefts and writing bad checks. And so um, he's sent to a juvenile detention uh, center again for shoplifting in 1950 when he's just he's just 13 years old at this point. Um, yeah, he's 13 years old, goes to the juvie center again for shoplifting. And then um, when he's 14, he, <laughs> he runs away from home and he, with a friend, by the way, him and a friend, they run away from home and they um, ride a, a freight train and hitchhike off, uh, they run away to Texas. So they're living in California, but they run away to Texas and they ride a freight train or hitchhike all throughout the state of Texas at the age of 14. And so um, when he comes home, he's arrested again for robbery and sends, sent back to Juvie, but later escapes to Modesto, California. I'm telling you, told you, he led quite a colorful little, little life there um, so yeah, he's escaped again to Modesto, California. So he'd worked some odd jobs in, while well, he's, has escaped, um, to California or Modesto. He did some, um, he was, he drove a truck, um, was a short order cook. He, uh was a hay pitcher and an oil well shooter. So anyways, many more times though, he was arrested and um, put like in detention center or jail, whatever, which whichever one. So he's either, you know, arrested, but he would, sometimes he would escape, sometimes he would do his time. It just kind of depend, I guess, depended on what he, I don't know. He just, he was in and out, in and out. But 
um, finally, I mean, I guess finally, you know, it there comes a time where he, it does all catch up to him because in 1958, he's, he's sent to actual prison. He goes to actual prison and, um, so he goes to prison in 1958 and, um, prison life is not easy. In fact, he's, he, prison life was pretty rough and he, um, spent some of his prison time in solitary confinement and he, uh, he, I guess he kind of befriended a person in prison who was, um, trying to escape and, um, that person, um, when he was trying to escape, ended up shooting a, uh, police officer. And so that person was brought back into prison and, um, then put on death row and was executed. So Merle, like that, like mentally affected Merle. And then also, at some point, I, Merle got married. So he, he's very young. When he's going, keep in mind, he's still very, very young. All this is happening when he is very young. Because when he went to prison um, in 1958, he was very young. But he got married um, at the age of 19. And he married this woman in 1956. So he was like, I think, I guess 17 years old, I guess, when he got married. Or no, he was 19 when he got married to this woman. So by the time he went to prison, I guess he was 21. I didn't do all the math. But anyways, he had married this woman when he was 19 years old in 1956. He went to prison in 1958. So during the, the time that he's in prison, he's married to this woman. And while he's in prison... They do have children, but she also has a child with another man. And that also uh, is an issue for him that affects him mentally. So, all these things are happening that he's, and he's, he's in solitary confinement. So, there's just a lot of things that are happening that he's kind of, you know, I, and being in solitary confinement and I, you know, makes you really, uh, think, right? So he's doing a lot of thinking in there in solitary confinement and he, and he's not, he doesn't spend his whole entire prison time in solitary confinement, but he, during his prison stay, he just, he does a lot of thinking in general. Okay. So anyways, while he's in prison, he uh, gets his high school equivalency diploma and he um, manages to keep a steady prison job. And he also plays in the prison country band. So, because, you know, he can sing and he plays guitar. So he plays in the prison country band. So he gets, he manages to clean his act up and uh, he gets paroled. He gets out of prison on parole in 1960. So he only was in prison for two years. So anyways, that's, that's a, a short prison stay out really. But um, in 1972, he was, um, by 1972, he had, he, he had become a, um, an established, um, country music star. He was quite, you know, by 1972, he's, he's pretty well known, making it big. But the then governor, California governor, the governor of California in 1972 was Ronald Reagan. 
and Ronald Reagan actually pardoned him of all his past crimes. So, as if, as if he never did any of them. He was pardoned of all his, his past crimes in 1972. So, the songs that he sings, those are, you know, he's pro the, he's singing, those are his real life experiences. Okay, so I did go off camera for a moment and I did do my mascara and put some eyelashes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my makeup here. Um, but anyways, picking back up with um, Merle Haggard. Um, so he was um, married five times, right? And <laughs> he had seven, seven children and um, so, I have to look at my notes to get to be sure I'm getting this all right. So, he was married five times. So, he was married to Leona Hobbs, who I already mentioned. Um, he married her, and he was married to her while he was in prison. So, from 1956, he was married to her from 1956 to 1964. And so, he was married to her before and during his prison time, and he married her um, at the age of 19 and she was, she was also quite young. Um, I don't know her age when, when they were married, but she was young too. Um, when they were married and they had, um, uh, four children together. But remember I was, I mentioned that she also had a child that while he was in prison, that wasn't his, that caused him to kind of, you know, that affected him mentally. Um, anyways, um, they had four children together, Dana, Marty, Kelly, and Noel are the children that they had together. Um, I don't know like their dates or anything like that, but anyways, so they were married. She's wife number one, um, from 1956 to 1964. And then, um, there was wife number two, who is Bonnie Owens, and he was married to her from 1965 to 1978. And Merle actually credits um, her as helping him make it big as a country artist. And she helped him write his hit song, um, Today I Started Loving You Again. And she actually was married to Buck Owens before she married Merle Haggard. Just a little FYI there. Okay, so, um, and then wife number three is, and they had, wife number two, they had no children together. Wife number three is Liana Williams. So, okay, wife number one and wife number three have the same first name, but they're not the same person. Wife number three is Liana Williams. And he was married to her from 1978 to 1983. No children together. And then, um, wife number four was Debbie Parrott. And she, they were married 1985 to 1991 and no children. And then, um, then last wife, number five, her name is Teresa Ann Lane, and they were married from 1993 until 2016 when he passed away. And they have two children together, um, Janessa and Ben. And now there's a seventh child somewhere along the way. And his name is Scott Haggard. And so there's no mention of who Scott's mother is. Um, I could not find out what time frame Scott was born, like what year he was born, 
and who his mother is. Apparently, his mother is not those, any of those five women that he was married to. So, don't know for sure who his mom is. And so, he just kind of popped up. So, anyways. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, we... The, the hag, he led a pretty rough life, not just, com not just committing his, um, crimes, um, doing, and doing his prison time, but also how he lived his life with his, his party, parter, I can't say, the way he partied, um, the way he, uh, he actually started like doing drugs but from what i understand he didn't start doing his drugs until like later on in his like 40s is when he started doing his drugs anyways i'm gonna wrap it up here um but i want to tell you what some of my a few of my favorite Merle Haggard songs are. And I did actually get the pleasure of seeing Merle Haggard in concert. If you watch my George Strait video, I talked about how I uh, went to have seen a lot of people in concert. And Merle Haggard is one of them. I got to see him back in 1997 at a club in Oklahoma City, and it was packed out. I could barely see him. It was so crowded in there. I had to stand up on the bar, and f luckily they let me continue to stand up there and didn't make me get down, or I wouldn't have been able to see him at all. It was so crowded. We probably were breaking fire the fire code. Anyways, but um, I was glad I got to see him. Okay, so my a few of my favorite songs by... Merle Haggard. Um, so, I would have to say Silver Wings is probably one of my most, was probably my favorite. And for some reason, that one reminds me of my grandma. I don't know exactly why, but I do think of her every single time I hear that song. And it's very, it's very pretty. It's one of my favorites. But, and then of course, Today I Started Loving You Again. Um, is, is a good one. Um, the bottle let me down again. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, hungry eyes. Oki from Muskogee. Um, if we make it through December. I think that's a good one. Uh, Poncho and Lefty, that's a duet he did with Willie Nelson. I think that's a good one. And who cannot like Mama Tried, right? Hence the shirt. My, one of my favorite t-shirts. One of my favorite Merle Haggard songs. I like that one. Anyways, those are my favorites. Leave, Tell me your favorites. Leave them in the comments. Anyways, so, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and even ring that bell. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate your support so much. I appreciate you watching and listening. Please leave your comments. I want to know what you think. Here is my completed makeup look for the day. Um, it's been fun. Until next time, please take care of yourself. This is me signing off. Bye.